Thanks guys for inviting me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my name's Jess, like, he already, like Jim already said. Um, and so I'm gonna talk to you today about Project Chimps, which we're so excited to be in this community. We have received so much interest and warm open arms welcoming us to this community. So I don't think we could have found a better place to have settled and started this project. So I just wanna thank you guys so much for inviting us. And um, hopefully you guys get really excited about the project too. So this is our very cool logo, Project Chimps logo. And if you guys notice, it's a chimp face, obviously. But if you look really closely inside the chimp face, you start to see the Blue Ridge Mountains. And so we had our logo designed because the Blue Ridge Mountains are so important to us and the community is so important to us here that we wanted to incorporate that into our logo. And if you start to look close, you see the trees and the cliff faces, but there's also two chimpanzees hidden in the face of the chimpanzee. Can anybody see the chimpanzees that are hidden in there? Most people never even notice them. It's kind of a sneak peek. So there's one right here sitting, a chimpanzee sitting right there. And then there's one very tiny chimpanzee in the ear standing quadrupedally there. So now you're experts on our logo and you can test other people when you see them wearing our shirt and say, do you know there's chimpanzees living in that logo? <laughs> So our mission is to end the use of chimpanzees in invasive biomedical research through advocacy, collaboration, and provide lifetime sanctuary care to chimpanzees in need. And this really has been coming over the last couple of years because prior to a couple of years ago, chimpanzees were, um, <coughs> they were listed as two different statuses. So captive chimpanzees were actually listed as threatened and wild chimpanzees were listed as endangered. And you can't actually do any kind of biomedical research on endangered animals. And so this is how the US got around it for many, many years, because they said, well, we'll solve that problem by just listing them differently if they live in captivity. So this was actually really unfair to chimpanzees. And we saw this change actually coming over the last couple of years, and several things kind of culminated all together, happened all together that led to this retirement of the chimpanzees that are now gonna be living in Fannin County. What happened was the Institute of Medicine actually said that we that biomedical testing and research on chimpanzees is not necessary that we don't need to do this kind of research then the institute of or the national institute of health said we aren't going to fund this type of research anymore and then the u.s fish and wildlife services last year said we're going to end the split listing of chimpanzees and captive chimpanzees are going to be listed as endangered just like their wild counterparts and all three of these things happening together, the laboratories that have chimpanzees basically decided that they were not gonna use chimpanzees in research anymore, they couldn't. And there was not gonna be any money for them to do this either. And so they wanted to get basically out of the business. And all of the federally owned chimpanzees, the chimpanzees that the federal government actually owned, they are mandated to go to a federally funded sanctuary and that sanctuary is called Chimp Haven and it's located in Louisiana. And so most of the chimpanzees that are still in, in research are federally owned. But there was a handful, well, more than a handful, several hundred chimpanzees that were still privately owned. And maybe they were used in federal studies, but they were actually owned by the private institutions or the laboratories that house them. And these chimpanzees, they had no contingency plan. They had nowhere to go for retirement. All that was happening was that the labs don't want, didn't want them anymore. And they were just expensive, basically, burdens for them to take care of. And so they wanted a way to, to retire these chimpanzees um, and find new homes for them. And so Sarah Beckler Davis, our CEO, saw this need that this was going to happen. Actually, Project Chimp started two years ago before it was actually a physical entity. And she was working on this problem of how she's gonna resolve this. And she approached several other sanctuaries because at that time she was the director of the North America Primate Sanctuary Alliance. And this is a governing body that governs all the prime, well, many of the primate sanctuaries in the United States. And so she went to the different chimpanzee sanctuaries asking them, would you be interested in, in helping me take on this challenge of retiring these privately owned chimps? And un, maybe unsurprisingly, no one was jumping up and down raising their hand because they already had so many chimpanzees to take care of. It's a really expensive endeavor, a really time consuming endeavor. And even though these other sanctuaries obviously, you know, really care about chimpanzees and want the best for them, it was just too much. There were hundreds of chimpanzees that needed this to happen, needed this home. And so Sarah decided this means a new sanctuary has to start. There's nowhere else for these individuals to go and I can't in good conscience walk away when the laboratories are saying they want to retire their chimpanzees. So she partnered um, 
with New Iberia, which is the facility that's retiring the chimpanzees to here. Um, and uh, Project Chimps was really born out of that. And just last year is when we kind of became a physical entity in December of last year when we purchased property here in Fannin County. So we were founded, like I said, a few years ago in 2014 to retire and, uh, and provide sanctuary for those chimps left in private research. And we are a registered nonprofit organization. And we purchased 236 acres in Morganton, which was formerly known as Gorilla Haven. Have any of you ever been to Gorilla Haven? when it's time? One, okay. Uh, and Stan has also now been to Project Chips, so he's the expert here. <laughs> and um, so Gorilla Haven actually was a really perfect place for us because there was a lot of infrastructure already there. We actually haven't erected any new building. We're, we're doing a lot of renovations on the current buildings that are there, but there was already a lot of space for, for what was gorillas then and now chimpanzees. And so we purchased that property in Morganton and then we are, been, are partnering with the University of Louisiana at New Iberia's Research Center to retire 220 chimpanzees. So I don't know, don't know if you guys knew that it was that many, but we will be retiring 220 to um, Fannin County. And the first residents arrived in early September. So we now have nine females living uh, in Morganton. So this is our Project Chimps team. This is Sarah Becker Davis, the mastermind and the CEO behind this project. And she really worked to pick a group of individuals that were really experts in their areas and could also bring a lot of knowledge and bring a lot of passion to the project. And so she kind of handpicked all the individuals that you see up here um, into their positions and we're working really hard as a team to make this sanctuary come to fruition. So this is an aerial view of some of the sanctuary, not the entire property, but this is the chimp areas of the sanctuary. And so these areas here are called villas. So this is Villa 1, Villa 2, Villa 3, and Villa 4. And this is what we call the group building, which also has administration here and the kitchen for the chimpanzees. And so in each of these buildings, there will eventually be chimpanzees living. Right now, we have nine females living in Villa 1 here. The next group of males that will come, they will come to Villa 3. That's the next villa that will be complete. When it was Gorilla Haven, only Villa 1 and Villa 3 had gorillas in it. And actually, these other areas were never completed. Um, they started to realize that there wasn't maybe a huge need to retire gorillas to a sanctuary um, and also money was starting to become tight. So the buildings were erected but a lot of them caging was never erected either inside or outside and so we're in the process of doing that for several of these buildings. And then this line you see kind of along here, this is a 15 foot concrete wall that encompasses six acres of wooded habitat. And so the chimpanzees will share this outdoor habitat. They actually don't have access to it just yet. While it works really well for the gorillas, um, gorillas, in my mind, being a primatologist and having studied many different ape species, but I definitely am, uh, have got focused on chimpanzees, gorillas are less motivated, I would say, than a chimpanzee is. And gorillas spend a lot of time on the ground and just kind of hanging out and eating and grunting and not doing much else. And chimpanzees are highly motivated, very inquisitive, intelligent. Gorillas are also intelligent, but they're just really motivated, inquisitive beings. And so we looked at this structure, even though it was a 15 foot concrete wall, it's kind of like Jurassic Park over there. And we thought, Maybe we need an additional level of security just to make sure, just to be absolutely safe. So we're getting ready to install prison grade style electric fencing as the first barrier of containment for the chimpanzees in the habitat. And so there will be electric fencing that runs all the way around and around these villas and actually divides this habitat in half. Um, so that half will access this and these two will access this side and that will be the first barrier um, for chimpanzees and then this will serve as a secondary barrier, uh, in some cases tertiary because there will be two layers of electric fence around the villas just to make sure that the security is absolutely um, tight at the sanctuary and we won't have any problems uh, in the future. So that's kind of a layout, but we have other buildings. We have a vet clinic that's not on this map. That's, that's just to the north of the map right there. Um, and we have many other buildings on property, but that's where the heart of the project really is. So here's just some fun photos uh, of the villa in the distance. Here's a close up of Villa One. So the chimpanzees have a porch area that is mesh caging here, kind of open air uh, where the air can just exchange through it. So it's like being outside, it's very light and bright. 
and this is Villa One where some of the chimps are living now. And then they also all have bedroom areas. So they all have indoor areas um, that are made out of mesh caging as well. And that's where the chimpanzees, they have access to both the porch and the bedroom at night. So they can fluctuate between sleeping under the stars if they want, or if it's a little cool or something going inside. Uh, so there's our 15 foot concrete wall. You can see that over there, the massive wall. And here's just a photo of our manager of chimp care, Laura, and our veterinarian, Gwendy, preparing some food for the chimpanzees. So we always want to emphasize that our facility safety is absolutely number one, comes first. We don't want anyone to worry about that. There's always jokes about chimps running around in Fanning County. That will never happen, I can assure you that. Um, but we take it very seriously and we've modeled our safety policies after um, basically all of the accredited chimpanzee sanctuaries and facilities and kind of taken the best of the, what we think is the best of the best from all of them to make sure we have really sound uh, safety protocols. We have multiple redundancies implemented in all of our routines and procedures, and that's especially important when we're unlocking for cleaning um, of the facility. So we have multiple checks in place to make sure that we would never, ever, ever have a chimpanzee escape on property. Um, all of our staff are, re -tra are trained in recapture techniques with frequent drills. So if you train and if you're prepared, it never happens, right? That's the rule. So we train, train, train. Actually, this week we just had a drill. I was the escaped chimpanzee. It was very fun. I actually wore a chimp mask and I escaped, uh, you know, escaped out of the same villa that the chimps were in. And so I was like hanging around, out around where the chimps were um, and the chimps loved it because I had this chimp mask on and they were like playing with me the whole time and so interested. So it was the best drill ever. Um, and I was successfully recaptured in only 30 minutes. So.